Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are, and welcome to this TechNet 21 webinar series on EIR or IAS, how to select the best digital immunization system for your country context. Today, we're going to have an overview of ComCare with the Jamaica use case. You can listen to this presentation in French or Spanish. To do so, please select the globe at the bottom of the Zoom window and choose the desired language. Uh, if you have any problem to find the, um, the, 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 the language, please uh, let me know in the chat area and I will uh, help you as much as I can. Uh, talking about the chat box, you can already introduce yourselves if you want to and tell us where you're from and your name. That would be great for us to know. You can also use the chat box for any other technical support. And uh, yeah, I'm here to help you. During this presentation, you can ask all the questions you have, you may have. So please use the Q&A box, which is also at the bottom of the Zoom window. Um, you can ask the questions really at any time and our panelists will answer them after the presentation during the Q&A session. Finally, um, again, this session is recorded uh, as usual and we'll share with you the links to the video as well as the slides. The video are recorded in French, Spanish and English and you will, you will receive all the links. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this session and I'll give the floor to Emily who will introduce the panelists. Emily, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Alex. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening. I'm delighted to introduce our three panelists today. Um, we'll start with Jordan Lerner, Senior Project Manager at Damagi. Jordan do joined Damagi in 2016 as a member of the New Delhi India team, where he led ComCare implementations across India, Ethiopia, Mozambique and Lesotho for a variety of health-centric use cases. In 2019, he relocated to Cape Town where he led Demagi's customer success team, working with self-start users of ComCare to maximize their impact. Since March, 2020, Jordan has been leading Demagi's COVID-19 response efforts internationally, which have since progressed into overseeing programs for COVID-19 vaccinations and managing Damagi's Crisis Response Corps. After Jordan, um, we'll be joined by Ms. Denise Palmer, who is the Acting Director of Information, Communication, and Technologies Unit at the Ministry of Health and Wellness in Jamaica. Mrs. Palmer is an information technology and project management specialist with ex extensive experience and management skills, who's been working with the MOHW for the past 27 years. During her tenure there, she's worked as an accountant and for the last 19 years as the lead of the ICTU unit. The Ministry of Health mandate is to provide quality health care in the best environment for all Jamaicans, and the ICTU is responsible for delivering high quality voice, data, information management, and network services to all head office staff members while giving ICT support to the four health regional authorities. In her role as acting director, Ms. Ms. Palmer is responsible for the day to day management of the unit and strategic planning. Finally, we'll be followed by Mr. Albert Beckford, who is the Application, Infrastructure, and Integration Technical Lead at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Albert is um, an experienced and knowledgeable information technology professional who's managed product projects, conducted research, and implemented technology solutions. He's a strong advocate for using technology to improve business processes and played a significant role in the Ministry of Health and Wellness's COVID-19 digital health efforts by coordinating the integration of the ComCare platform with a pre-existing appointment and vac vaccine scheduling system and certificate portals. Um, Thank you all for joining us today. Again, we're delighted to have you here. And with that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Jordan to begin the presentation. Over to you, Jordan. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, and thank you all for joining today. As Emily mentioned, I'll be providing an overview of ComCare, passing it over to Denise and Albert to talk a little bit about how they implemented the platform, and then we'll go into the Q&A. Specifically, I'll be introducing Demagi and ComCare, providing an overview of the Demagi vaccine solution, 
a template application that provides a holistic management of vaccination campaigns, and then providing an overview of how it can be implemented. To start, you've, you've heard a brief introduction about me. Uh, thank you all again. Um, I'm a, a senior project manager at Demagi, coming at you today from Cape Town, South Africa. Demagi is an award-winning social enterprise, 20 years old this year, founded out of MIT and Harvard, dedicated to building innovative technology to amplify the impact of frontline worker programs. Our mission is to build sustainable impact through technology to support traditionally underserved populations. We have offices in the United States, India, South Africa, Ethiopia, and have supported partners across a wide variety of sectors in over 3,000 projects. Our technology has been deployed in well over 130 countries. The primary technology that we support is Compare, a data collection and service delivery support tool designed to support frontline worker programs at the last mile. It is a global digital good that has been recognized as one of the more effective solutions for COVID-19 response support and is the most evidence-based platform of its kind. There are over 75 peer review studies that have demonstrated the impact of ComCare on frontline worker programs across the globe. It's in use by over 1 million frontline workers across the world and has been used to register over 400 million individuals. A few important things to know about the platform is that it's, or that it's offline first, meaning it meets frontline workers where they are to support them as they deliver service to their communities. It supports offline case management, meaning that frontline workers can follow up with entities whatever context they're working in with the information they need when they need it, no matter where they're working. It supports a wide variety of local languages and is an open source platform, meaning that there's an open source community contributing to its constant development. The platform also supports the integration of multimedia, both displaying images, audio and video to users to support low literacy users, and the capture of multimedia in the case of necessity for identity verification or signature gathering. Now, in November 2020, Demagi built and released a COVID-19 vaccine delivery solution powered by ComCare to assist lower and middle income countries with the equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The solution was designed to support the tracking of vaccine recipients before, during, and after they received a COVID-19 vaccine. It featured mobile apps for vaccine administrators, direct-to-vaccine recipient messaging workflows, and dashboards that could be used by program officials to help drive data-driven decision-making. You can see the workflow in front of you. It supports the registration of community members, screening of said community members to assess their eligibility for the COVID-19 vaccine. It helps frontline workers record dose delivery, schedule subsequent follow-up doses. In between doses, it helps to ensure follow-up on appointments and record any adverse events. And all of that, like I said, feeds into dashboards for monitoring of campaign progress. Demagi made this solution available to the global community, and you'll hear more today about how it was deployed at scale to support vaccination campaigns in Jamaica. It was also deployed in Somalia at scale. Now, the success and challenges of deploying the solution reinforced our belief that digital solutions can play a role in accelerating service delivery at the last mile. And while COVID-19 vaccination remains critical, we've all heard the warnings that routine immunization must also be a hot, top priority for healthcare across the globe. Disruptions from the pandemic have set us back many years on routine immunization progress. So we believe there's a need for digital tools 
that can enable countries to maintain their focus on COVID-19 while simultaneously supporting the delivery of routine immunization. And with that in mind, and drawing on our experience working with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and UNICEF in Jamaica, along with the Mogi's 20 years of experience equipping frontline workers with digital job aids, we've now developed a solution, the Demagi vaccine solution, that's expanded from what we built in co for COVID-19 in support of Jamaica and others to support routine and COVID-19 vaccine delivery. The solution offers a combo of facility, workforce, and service delivery management and tools for frontline workers, program administrators, and clients. The application is a ready-to-deploy toolkit for vaccine management that includes six micro-applications, each which are designed for a unique challenge related to managing vaccination programs at scale. Each micro-application can be used on its own, so totally independently, or in conjunction with the other micro-applications. Each can be easily removed and all are designed to be configured based on local requirements. We've developed deployment-ready documentation to help jumpstart teams as they get started implementing the solution. Similar to the solution for COVID-19, this tool includes three core components, an application for frontline workers, messaging workflows for direct to community member communication, and a dashboard to support program monitoring, all of which I'll walk you through now as I give you the opportunity to see the solution in action. The first micro application is that for client registry. It's used by frontline workers to register community members and households and record their vaccination history. In countries with digitized birth registries, this micro app can provide an opportunity for integration to ensure that community members are captured in the system from the time of their birth. And once their records are created, as you can see happening here, frontline workers can easily update information on those individuals as they receive vaccination, which feeds into the next micro application that for vaccine delivery. Once individuals are registered within the platform, the vaccine delivery micro application can be used by vaccine administrators to check for doses that are due and moreover record doses provided so that they can schedule follow up appointments for subsequent doses as you see happening in front of you now. This micro application is driven by a configurable vaccine scheduler that can easily be updated on the platform enabling governments to add and roll out new vaccines when they become available. The next micro application is that for adverse events following immunization. And this allows individuals to report adverse events via messaging workflow, and also for frontline workers to record adverse events experienced at a clinic or reported by an individual who's received a vaccine. You can see that recording happening here. Reporting an adverse event in this micro application triggers a follow-up investigation into the event by a healthcare worker. The goal of this workflow is to increase follow-up with individuals and allow governments or any deployer to track those adverse events across demographic information, and more specifically, vaccination type. The next micro application is that for community mobilization and counseling. It's designed to be used by community health workers for vaccine confidence counseling and to allow for the follow-up with community members in case they've missed an appointment. You can see that happening now. This helps to record when an individual has missed a vaccine report, appointment, reschedule that appointment, and then provides service delivery messaging to help combat vaccine hesitancy. We believe that by addressing vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, this micro application can help ultimately generate demand for vaccines and provide a feedback loop to governments to help respond to vaccine hesitancy with timely and targeted public health messaging. 
The Demagi vaccine solution also includes a micro app for health worker training. This micro application can be used to disseminate verified and approved training content, including quizzes and multimedia, such as images, audio clips, videos. What you see in front of you is a brief module on the basics of vaccines. This content is all made available offline so that staff can access it even in remote areas. And you can imagine that this has, this can be updated over time with verified information and there's major benefit to having a channel in which you can feed updated training information. This can help save time and resources as compared to in-person or paper-based trainings. The final micro application is that for facility management and stock monitoring. It enables vaccine site managers to register their vaccination facilities and track basic stock and logistics data. It enables administrators to track key metrics leading up to stock outs and to avoid wastage or a dearth of vaccines at a given clinic. It also features facility readiness modules to help ensure the readiness of facility infrastructure and staff to conduct vaccination campaigns. It can be used to get in front of stockouts and to help trigger vaccine ordering when necessary. Now, all data collected on this platform can be fed into dashboards and we've built sample ones on Superset, an open source data visualization platform. The key, programmatic, key program indicators tab helps to report on things such as the number of clients registered and doses administered to get a high level view into the campaign. There's a vaccine delivery tab, which provides key information about the progress of vaccination programs, like the percentage of individuals that have been fully vaccinated, drop off rates in between vaccines. And this tab can be filtered by location to provide insight into how one geographic or administrative area compares to another and how they're progressing on their vaccination goals. There's an adverse event following immunization tab, which visualizes adverse events that are experienced and can be broken down and filtered by vaccination type to get specific insight into who is experiencing adverse events, when they're experiencing adverse events, and which vaccines are triggering said events. There's a tab for community counseling, which visualizes data on the number of vaccine hesitancy combating events that are being planned by community health workers. And this tab provides detail about who is vaccine hesitant and why. Finally, there's a vaccine stock management tab, which visualizes key info about stock availability, including potential stock outs and potential wastage reported by facilities. Now that, what I just explained, is the core Demagi vaccine solution, but there are also wraparound solutions. You'll hear a little bit more about how ComCare can be integrated with third-party digital vaccine certificate platforms. It can also be integrated with DHIS2 for aggregate reporting, with Rapid Pro and Turn.io and WhatsApp for messaging workflows. It can be integrated with an IVR solution for direct-to-client calling, and ComCare easily integrates with the biometric platforms to help with their identity verification. I'm going to quickly run through the benchmarking framework that we were provided. Um, the Demagi vaccine solution and, and ComCare at large, which can be configured based on local needs, can help to facilitate decision support for vaccine providers. From a high level, it helps with the scheduling of appointments, but as we saw in, and as the team in Jamaica will explain, it can more easily integrate with third-party tools, which are specifically designed for the sake of vaccine scheduling. ComCare can help with the capture and reason of, of reason of refusal for vaccination and help get in front of stockouts. It can help to facilitate patient monitoring and produce individualized patient reports. It can collect data on both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals and feed all of that data into sophisticated reporting tools for analysis. It can display aggregate data, both back to frontline workers and at the headquarter or administrative level. 
It has open APIs, meaning that it can exchange data through globally recognized standards, such as fire standards. It is not our recommended tool for, for micro planning, but it does help to produce data visualizations such as charts, which you just saw. It helps to capture AFI information, and it can collect the data necessary to help build and generate verifiable vaccine certificates but it need integrate with a third party tool to generate them. It is not a recommended tool to support the track and trace of vaccines via the use of standards such as GS1. Um, there are many other LMIS tools that are, are far more sufficient than Comcare at that. Now at Magi, we offer three hosting options for Comcare. 99% of Comcare users use the Demagi hosted cloud where Demagi provides software and data storage in a HIPAA, GDPR, ISO, and SOC 2 compliant environment managed entirely by Demagi. Another option is the hybrid hosting option in which Demagi continues to host and manage the software. So you get those same security benefits, but once data is collected on the Comcare platform, it is pushed from the Demagi hosted cloud instance to one hosted locally by a partner where the data can be stored for long-term analysis. Finally, because the platform is open source, teams also have the option to host Comcare on-premise when they will be managing hardware and software. I'll talk a little bit about how to implement Comcare or the Demagi vaccine solution. And keep in mind, as I provide these options, I'm going to predominantly focus on the SaaS or hybrid options and speak less about if teams decide to host Comcare on-premise, as that can impact many factors. But the Demagi vaccine solution can be implemented and customized to meet the needs of partners. There are many implementation models, ranging from a totally self-driven or self-start model to one in which Local teams receive support from Demagi's delivery team on everything from app building to integration development, to report development, to training and ultimately deployment of the solution. Timelines to get to the field are dictated by the level of implementation support required along with the level of customization required on that tool. Now, Demagi Vaccine Solution is designed to quickly be customized. And you'll hear more about what it took to customize the COVID-19 template to the Jamaican context shortly. There are two predominant contracting options to keep in mind when considering Comcare as an EIR. As I mentioned, partners can independently adapt and deploy the vaccine solution as a SaaS offering. So as they, in this instance, they would have a technical team who could refine the solution based on local needs, lead that deployment, and we've built extensive documentation to support teams who are interested in doing that. Everything from training guidelines to technical startups to help teams move quickly and efficiently in case they're interested in deploying the tool. Teams interested in this option, and I'll speak more about this briefly, must pay a monthly hosting fee that includes Demagi's standard support SLA. Teams who are looking for more hands-on support also have the option to contract our delivery team, of which I am a part of, and which work with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and UNICEF in Jamaica to provide hands-on program implementation support. So all of those services from app building and training and deployment assistance that I just mentioned, our, our delivery team is well-suited to provide and has lots of experience providing. Contract timelines and cost in this instance are really dependent on the support needed, and we have a team available to work with partners to help get this contracting moving in case folks are interested. Now, there are a few cost considerations to keep in mind as one thinks through how to set up and maintain the Demagi vaccine solution or any other Comcare mobile application. Predominantly, these costs are driven by the implementation model as well as the complexity of the application. So there is no one size fits all model on how to do this. But from a high level, for teams interested in deploying the tool as a self-start, uh, 
The Demagi Vaccine Solution partners pay a subscription fee of $1,200 per month, which includes access to the space, the tool, 500 users, and for teams interested in a technical onboarding, there are also packages available. As I mentioned, partners can also contract our delivery team, and that will involve paying for a monthly hosting fee, along with the cost of Demagi's time. Partners should keep in mind that there are potential additional costs, including integrations and messaging. At that point, at this point, I'm going to pass it over and stop sharing my screen. Um, so Emily and Albert and Denise, over to you. Thank you, Jordan, for that excellent overview of the Demagi vaccine solution. I am now sharing my screen and um, we'll turn the mic over to Denise. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you also for the introduction um, of myself and Albert, and I'll move straight along. So the Maggie and Comcare came at a very good time for us here in Jamaica. Like it, it's almost our savior. So in March of this year, we became the first Caribbean country to receive a shipment of COVAX um, procured vaccine. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, I'll call MOH and Dublin moving forward, are the ministry, um, along with UNICEF and the private sector, joined with the MAGI to help combat the spread of the virus through the rapid deployment of ComCare. Next. All right. So by doing that, it had the following impact. And what, what did we do? One. COVID-19 affected the socioeconomic situations in Jamaica. The government approved vaccine deployment and vaccine interim plan. We established a vaccine management task for comprising of six mainstreams, appointed ICT expert as chairman of the information system, work stream to establish a digital platform for the vaccine rollout, and Jamaica COVID-19 implementation program got on the way immediately. So our engagement with private sector, because um, it's very important that we keep them in the loop. They, apart from financial support, the private sector is a main stakeholder. So hence, they came on board immediately. So the private sector in the um, vaccine initiative is a, main, is a mechanism, mechanism to support the Jamaica COVID vaccine effort. And those are some of their slogans, get the facts, get the vax. The private sector encouraged Jamaican to get right, to get right information about COVID-19 vaccine and get vaccination at the first opportunity. And by this, I we meant, so although the government were giving vaccine, the government from the health centers, with the correct tool mechanism, the private sector were offering vaccine to private sector companies so as to get the country rolling back up. Most of this time, we were still on a lockdown. Can continue, Emily? Come care and COVID-19 vaccine delivery. So as shown by Jordan, we utilize mainly the mobile app, which is seen here, picture there. And it said in 2020, the market developed a solution to capture vaccine details and equitable di distribution of COVID-19 vaccine. The, sol the solution is currently at the national scale in multiple countries with multiple countries with over 1.4 million vaccine doses tr tracked in Jamaica. For Jamaica, it was la launched in May 2021. Up to October 20th, 2022, 1,496,493 doses have been recorded in the system. The ComCare mobile application was deployed in over 150 vaccine sites with over 2,000 plus users. Superset reported dashboard, so that's the other screen picture there that you're look, um, looking at was developed. The digital vaccine certificate was launched in December 2021, and that is um, aid into combat fraud and that persons, other countries who didn't want the paper um, certificate, we could have that, that persons could travel freely. Over 150 persons were trained and then we have the trainer trainer. So 
once it was trained and they assist the original trainer in training others, implemented change management tool and adopt, adoption of the digital tools. Right, so this is our timeline here, as you can see. So the initial request started in February 2021, the 24th to be exact, we had a meeting, the first meeting on the 25th of February. I have to understand that we had to move pretty fast based on what was happening. And in March, invitation to bid, then we rolled on to meeting with the PM and then meeting with the other stakeholders, JCO, um, LARCO, COVID group, vendor selection, implementation, and from then we have been using the software. Can continue, Emily. So this is our this is our deployment architecture, how it's deployed here in Jamaica. So you have the portal um, for data correction request. You have an appointment system that we use with another software. Um, you have an SMS gateway because with persons once you make the appointment and an SMS is sent to your phone to alert you of your appointment that was recently made and so just in case there is need for any changes, you're aware of that also. And that feeds into Compare and the reporting platform um, servers. The reporting platform server gives the day-to-day -day update report. And I must hasten to say that this is real-time reports or maybe like about a 10 minutes um, delay so by the end of a vaccination day, you, you, you would have seen everything that was done on that day. From the Comcare um, server, it's, um, it's the mobile devices are con um, connected in which the, the users there, there is as the actual users um, who are dealing with the vaccine. And you have different level of users. You have the data entry, the first point, um, where it's somewhat like a triage. Then you have the nurses who access some, um, they would do the further evaluation before a vaccine is administered. Then you have the doctors who confirm, you know, to see that all is well. And then for the digital certification, now that's where the, the additional dive up server is there. And there's a copy of what our digital certification portal looks like. Can okay, I go to the next slide, Emily? Thanks. So for the MOH worker, user, this is the re workflow as previously mentioned, screening. So you register clients, screen for ed eligibility, and you manage the wait list. Then you have the vaccination where the recorded dose delivery, the schedule for the next dose and track course completion. Then you have the follow-up we record adverse, where we record adverse cases, because that's very important. Mm -hmm. And lot lost to follow up tracking. So that is done at that stage. And then you have the certification. And uh, you know, certification will reflect different things. Um, if there's a single dose like the Johnson and Johnson, it's we would only see one there, as my coworker will indicate um, further down. Next slide, please. So implementation changes. So for these, we did lower digital literacy across the health work, health workforce, resistance to the adoption of the technology, the NASCAN digital health architecture and the health information system, we had low level of internet connectivity across the island. So those were some of the challenges. And then of course, alignment of stakeholders across autonomous health regions. And then there was a pressure, which was very hard to deploy in this quick stage. Next slide, please. And for everything, we have to have a training strategy. So coming from some of those challenges, which we foresee on the spot or some which we foresee um, earlier, we realized that training was one of the best tool to get things moving. So this training strategy was training of trainers model, ensure that 150 master trainers were equipped with the knowledge and skill to train more than 1000 healthcare workers across the island, including, so the training trainers, including medical officers, primary health nurses, medical record officers, and information technology officers. 
and the capacity building session with the MOH was conducted on troubleshooting with pump care in order to move to the next step stage. So from this point on, I'll hand over to my other team member to continue the rest of the presentation, Mr. Albert Beckford. All right, uh, thank you, Denise. You're welcome. And uh, thanks to all the attendees who have uh, joined us. All right, so let me just get right into it. So. I'm going to present, you know, just a brief overview of how we use the solution here at the MOH. So users are primarily, you know, using the mobile app. And um, so we provided them with uh, tablets and the tablets contain uh, a SIM card so that we can get uh, connectivity, internet connectivity, because we have several locations that are remote and there's no broadband internet, so there's no Wi-Fi. So we provide all users with a tablet that has SMS capability. And as Jordan mentioned earlier, the application is, mobile, is offline first, meaning that they don't really need the data connection until they're, they are ready to sync with the server to push whatever data they, they would have collected. Nevertheless, we thought it made sense to give them that capability um, throughout their, their you know, use of the system. So how we use a system, we are able to register clients on the system. We are able to screen for eligibility. And we also maintain a waiting list on the tablets so that persons at the facility can get an idea of the number of clients who were scheduled to get vaccinated on a particular day, all right? And this is done essentially based on the appointments that were made previously in the appointment system because we have an integration with that system. And so each person who made an appointment, their their name and other details would appear on the tablet being used at the respective facility where the appointment was made. All right, next slide, please. All right, so this is just a continuation of um, that. So you can see the top image there is showing some of the screening questions. So for example, we have some clinical questions we're asking if the patient is on blood thinners or if they have a bleeding disorder. We're asking if you had a recent vaccine, maybe in the last two weeks and so on, because some of these questions are then used to determine if the client can indeed get a COVID-19 vaccine. And so based on responses, the system is going to say, no, you can't get a vaccine but the medical personnel, the doctor at the site would be able to, uh, you know, based on interviewing the person further, they might say, well, based on, you know, that interview, the person can indeed get the vaccine. So the system provided that option to override the default uh, response, um, you know, uh, the, the default response of the system. All right, and the last, okay, thanks. All right, and then this slide here now is just showing an idea of what the waiting list looks like. So it would uh, essentially show the client's name, the client's ID number, and the date that they were registered. Next slide, please. All right, so in terms of how we use the system, uh, in addition to the first three uh, uh, use cases, we are also able to record the dose delivery. Uh, we are also able to schedule the next dose and we can keep track of the vaccine course that the person is on. So as you can see on the right-hand side there, in terms of the menu, the all registered clients would simply show a list of everybody who's registered and uh, while the, um, 
after the recording of the dose, then we can schedule when the person is supposed to come back for the next dose. So the system would automatically compute the time based on the type of vaccine. So for Pfizer, it would be three weeks, whereas for AstraZeneca, it would be eight weeks. But let's just say you know that you knew that you weren't going to have any vaccine in three weeks, but you might have it in four weeks, then you could override the, the, the schedule and put four weeks. Next slide, please. Okay, so another functionality is the recording of adverse events, which uh, Jordan spoke to. And this is important so that we can record any undesirable effects of the vaccine. And that can be used for reporting and tracking purposes. We also have lots of follow-up tracking where users who miss their appointments, sorry, clients who miss their appointments, we are able to get a list of those clients. We have to see how long, how many days since they missed their follow-up appointments, meaning you know, to come back for their second dose or their or their booster. And then the clinic staff can take action based on that. So they can, you know, contact the persons to encourage them to, to come in for their, their vaccinations. Next slide, please. So another important aspect of how we use the system is the generation of a digital, a verifiable digital COVID-19 vaccination certificate. So this was done in conjunction with e-government foundation in India, and they contributed this uh, solution to the government of Jamaica. And we, we were able to implement this in a very short time. I think it took maybe six weeks for us to, to implement this. It is a pretty sophisticated system and the team at the Maggi, uh, Ministry of Health, UNICEF and e-government in India worked together quite well to achieve this in such a short time. So how it works is that the patient or the client goes onto the ministry's website uh, with using just their telephone number and the phone number would have been associated with their vaccine record. They enter the phone number in the system. They get an SMS with a, a, a code and they use that code to download the certificate. In some instances, the phone number might be associated with more than one certificate because let's say there's a family and they have children, you know, the, the mom or the dad might have the phone number and it's the same phone number for the child's records. And so all they would need to, they would get the complete list of persons and they would select the one that they want to uh, download. Once they download that certificate, they can save it on their phone, they can print it, and then it can be verified subsequently. So. In, in, in a number of cases, Jamaicans who have traveled abroad, you know, um, their certificates are able to be verified wherever they are. And all that person has to do is go back on the ministry's website, click that verification link, and then scan this QR code. And once they scan it, if, they, if, the, QR, if the certificate is valid, the user will get that message. However, if the certificate has been revoked, for whatever reason, then they would get a message that the certificate is invalid. Next, please. All right, so in terms of the limitations and the technical challenges, uh, and of course, learning and involvement. So from these limitations and technical challenges, we had to learn and, and evolve. So we found that the Comcare uh, system needed to be configured for, uh, for clients seeking second doses from different facilities. So that was the first one because initially it was, you know, designed so that the person would need to go back to the original facility to get their second dose. But then after some time, we found that people were turning up at, you know, completely different uh, facilities for whatever reason. And so we had to modify the system to facilitate that. So the Demaga team was quite um, good in doing that in a short time. We also had some uh, 
sinking issues in the beginning based on the volume of records that were on the on the, the mobile phone because uh, sorry on the tablet because it would keep maybe three days um, records on the on the tablet and we found that this was making the system a bit slow so the Maggie again made some changes and we reduced the number of records on the tablet at you know at the various sites and so the syncing improved significantly thereafter. One of the biggest challenges was our our initial rollout in that we had to do a rapid bulk data entry. So we, we used, I think it was maybe two months or less than two months in May, between May and June uh, 2021 to get this done. So we employed a team of about maybe 80 persons and they were entering records that were in books, right? So we the, the, these books you see on the right here, they were entering the records from these books. And of course, you know, with the, the handwriting and so on, it was not always easy. And so we had a lot of issues as a result. Luckily though, we were able to correct those errors subsequently. So for example, when a person came back for their second dose, then we were able to make corrections to those. Um, so another issue that we had was the unanticipated changes in the policy. For example, sometime this year, the ministry said, well, you know, we started with AstraZeneca and then we had Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer, but now people could start because, you know, based on WHO guidelines and so on, people could start getting different vaccines. So they might have got AstraZeneca for, for their first dose, but for their second dose, they felt like they wanted to get Pfizer. And so the ministry decided that that was going to be a policy. So again, it was the market to the rescue, um, you know, quickly implementing this change uh, after it was, you know, documented um, by us. And we now have this ability to, to, to mix vaccines. Next, please. So where we are now is that Persons who were originally resistant to the technology are now very appreciative of it. So for example, I have medical personnel, nurses and doctors calling me all the time and they want various reports from the system and they want to know about a, a particular client and whether they, you know, the, 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 the paper uh, card that were originally issued Maybe the people can't find the cards and they want us to confirm if the information is on the system and all that kind of stuff. So we have seen a big shift in how people think about the digitization uh, program. And I think this is one of the, the great uh, benefits of, of this technology in that people are now more receptive to technology in healthcare. And we anticipate that this will actually help the country as we seek to, you know, um, roll out other initiatives. So for example, we're now looking at the uh, routine immunization uh, activities. And so we feel that people will be more receptive to that as well as other things like, for example, electronic health records, if we are, you know, to go in that direction. Next, please. All right, so in terms of enabling factors and, and what uh, countries would need to have in place to ensure you know, sustainability and so on, you obviously need to have some sort of ICT infrastructure, right? So although the, the app itself is offline first, you do need some internet connectivity because you have to get connected to the server at some point, right? Obviously, you need the tablets that you're going to use, or even a mobile phone, right? Because it can work on a mobile phone as an Android phone. And, and of course, you need electricity because you have to keep the devices charged and available. You also need to have, you know, the financial investment uh, for long-term sustainability and maintenance cost, hosting, uh, additional development work, and so on. So that's going to be very important. Then there needs to be the social and, and political um, 
aspect of, of, of the investment. So we need change management, we need training of staff, and we need commitment from the authorities and possible legal you know, changes as well in terms of laws and so on, right? So that is going to be very important. And of course, you need a program management. So you need to have people in place and processes to take action, make decisions, and to just manage the overall process. Next, pro next slide, please. All right, so this slide is just showing you what we're coming from. So we have these big books. Now we're using the tablets. The forms you see here on the right, the client completes these forms. And then from that, we get the data entry. Obviously, the next step is probably to not even have these forms. But you know we have to take it one step at a time. And I think we have made great progress. And there's more to be done. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jordan, Denise, and Albert for those great presentations on both um, the ComCare Demagi solution and how it was implemented in Jamaica. Um, I see that there are a few questions in the chat. Jordan, it looks like the first few might be for you. So if you could come off of mute. Um, the first is from an anonymous attendee asking if there is a proactive triggering system to notify an administrator prior to when a vaccine or immunization is due. And then there's a second around how many languages the application is now available in. Sure, thank you for the two great questions. Uh, there are two methodologies um, to the notification process, depending on which components of the solution are deployed. If Messaging is a component that is included in the deployment of the Demagi vaccine solution. There is a proactive message shared with the potential vaccine recipient leading up to their vaccine due date to ensure that they show up to that appointment. Then on the administrative end, there is a list of upcoming vaccination appointments that you can view and see when folks are supposed to come in. And when that day passes, another list of folks who have missed their appointments is compiled. So as to facilitate easy follow-up by whomever is responsible for that follow-up, whether that be CHWs, community outreach members, or otherwise. Currently, the application is only available in English, but ComCare supports a wide array of languages, and we are exploring the possibility of translating it based on partners who are interested in deploying it. Uh, the translation process within ComCare is quite seamless, and the yeah, ComCare in general has been deployed in, in many, many, many languages across the globe. Thanks, Jordan. There are a few questions in the chat from Mishra. Um, so I'll, I'll toss them over to you. Um, there's one about where data is stored and how secure is the messaging network? Sure. So data is stored um, in the Jamaican context. And, and like I said, for about 99% of ComCare users on in a Demagi hosted cloud environment, the servers are located in the United States. Um, they are HIPAA, GDPR, and SOC 2 compliant. Messaging network is, is generally off of Demagi um, hosted environments. So it's, it's less easy for me to speak about the security of said messaging networks. Thank you. There's another question um, from Mishra. This is again around scheduling. Is it automated or manual based on the date of birth and doses that have been delivered? How would this work in routine immunization? How does it behave when a child moves from another country? And does this take into account the catch-up schedules if they're different between countries? Yeah, this is a great question. And the vaccine scheduler is something we're quite excited about. There are actually two components that feed into how vaccines are scheduled on the platform. It is an automated process that is programmed on the back end of the system, taking into account vaccination history, date of birth, 
and other eligibility factors. Based on that mix of factors, um, predominantly age and vaccines already received, vaccines received, um, upcoming vaccinations are scheduled based on the requirements of a given country. Um, and, and I think the same goes for um, that catch-up schedule. We are assuming that deployers of the Demagi vaccine solution will provide requirements that they want in that vaccine scheduler. So person at X age needs to have received these three vaccines. Once they receive their first dose, there's a six week waiting period between the second. And all of that is calculated on the back end and to answer another question that I see in the chat, this is all done on the administrative side of the platform, and it can be done by a non-developer. It's all managed in a simple lookup table. Great, thanks, Jordan, and thanks for responding to that other question as well. Um, there's a question from Bingo around, can the platform be integrated or can it be integrated with common registries like a health worker registry or a facility registry? Absolutely. In the same way that uh, it, I, I suggested the possibility of ComCare being integrated with a birth registry so that as soon as a community member is born, their vaccine schedule is imported into the platform and available, it can be integrated with any other registries that exist in country, whether that be in other platforms such as DHIS2, or if it's um, something less technologically sophisticated, like a, a large Excel sheet or a more sophisticated database. Um, ComCare, like I said, is open APIs that make these integrations relatively seamless and which enable that six week period between choosing the DiVoc platform as the vaccine certificate generator in Jamaica and actually deploying vaccine certificates in country. Thanks, Jordan. And I think we'll wrap up with this last question um, around whether there are countries that are using Demagi nationwide as their only immunization register for all vaccines in their national immunization programs? And if so, which ones? I don't know. There, there are several governments who are deploying ComCare at scale for a wide variety of use cases. Um, our largest deployment was in India to 700,000 frontline workers and involved scheduling of vaccines for newborns. Um, but I don't know of any countries that are using ComCare, Demagi's technology, as the sole source of their immunization registry. Thanks, Jordan. Um, I see we are at time. And I know that the great team at TechNEC 21 puts the questions out and they get answered after the end of the webinar. So please make sure to check their website, both for the recordings and responses to questions that we did not get to today. Um, with that, I think we can we'd say goodbye and thank you, unless Alex, you want to come off mute and um, close us out. Thank you very much. No, this is, um, this was, this is a great uh, presentation. Thank you. Um, just a reminder that we have a last session um, next uh, next week, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, this will be on Open SRP uh, with the Nigeria use case. Apart from that, a reminder that we will send the recording of this session um, and uh, as well as the slides, and um, that's it for me. Thank you so much to the um, to the panelists and thank you very much to our interpreters and i wish you all uh, and, and thank you so much emily and fred for organizing this i wish you all um, a very nice rest of the day and we hope to see you next week merci thank you thank you too and bye bye <laughs> bye thanks everyone appreciate all the great questions take care thank you Okay, bye folks. Thanks.